today, Stephen Endersby. Stephen is a simulation project manager here at Dassault System SolidWorks Corporation. A passionate believer in the be benefits of design analysis, uh, Stephen is confident that every designer can make use of the SolidWorks simulation tools. Prior to joining the product management team, Stephen was a territory technical manager for five years, covering the UK and Northern Europe region. With his wide exposure to many industry problems and extensive education, including a PhD in analysis and a master's in science in aerodynamics, Stephen is well versed in the application of simulation to solve real life problems. Welcome Stephen, and thank you. It's all yours. Thank you, Amy. Um, so for the next 22 minutes, we're going to talk about maximizing product life. And basically, to maximize product life or service life, we're going to try and tackle the uh, problem of fatigue. Um, now, we can't, I can't, don't have time to do everything uh, within fatigue, but we will be posting an expanded presentation of uh, what you're going to see today uh, later on. So we're going to go through a quick um, what is fatigue and how we can predict fatigue with SOLIDWORKS before we spend the bulk of our time uh, going through a, a demonstration with you. But before we get started, I'd just like to have a, a quick um, set the ground to see how you're doing your design validation today. Um, how do you estimate, uh, calculate your design service life? Do you do physical testing? Um, do you use hand calculations such as building to code? Do you standalone FEA or integrated FEA? And by integrated, I mean within the CAD environment, or don't you do anything? So Stephen, we'll give people a couple more seconds to finish responding. Uh, but so far, it looks like majority of people are doing physical testing, followed by hand calculation, and then almost an even split of standalone FEA and integrated FEA. OK. So uh, that's pretty much to be expected um, fatigue analysis of fatigue prediction has been dominated by physical testing, um, but uh, with the new advances in uh, machines and uh, computers, we can uh, we can change that slightly. So, again, let's uh, get the uh, ground levels set up. What is fatigue? Essentially, fatigue is the weakening or failure of an object under repeated loading over time. Uh, the important point to uh, make here is that a single application of that load will not cause the uh, component to fail. Okay, it's, a, it's the repeated part of that loading that's important. And it's the prime cause of failure for many metal parts. Uh, examples would include things like rotating machinery, crankshafts and the like, bolts, airplane wings, uh, consumer products, offshore platforms. Basically anything that has a load cycle can be uh, subjected to a fatigue failure. In terms of what happens during the fatigue process, I think it's important to realize that uh, fatigue is, uh, initiates at uh, surface cracks. So the importance of what happens on the surface and the surface finishes is, is, uh, dominates some of the fatigue uh, behavior. But once the surface crack has actually grown, it will quickly ratchet out. Uh, and then you see these characteristic breach marks across the component until final failure through brittle fracture. What's interesting to note in this example is just how much of the component has actually failed before the um, catastrophic failure happens. Again, this shows the actual load it was under was quite low compared to its uh, ultimate strength. So let's talk a little bit about the basic concepts. So as I said before, fatigue is caused by repeated loading. And we have different types of loading. We can have a constant amplitude loading, i.e. the peaks and troughs of my loading um, occur regularly and are of the same magnitude all the time. Or we can have what we'd have a variable uh, amplitude where even though it looks random in nature, these uh, blocks of loading will occur regularly over time. Uh, this might be if you want to characterize a car suspension or maybe an oil rig in the sea. Um, so we can actually uh, assign a load case to these types of random nature of events. Now, fatigue strength is characterized by the material's SN curve. Now, the SN curve basically lets you know if you apply a certain uh, uh, stress 
uh, level to your component and cycle it over time, you'll get a certain fatigue life. And what we have here is we can see that things are characterized by low cycle fatigue, high cycle fatigue, and infinite life. In low cycle fatigue, it's the strain rate that dominates. High cycle fatigue means the stress rate dominates. And infinite life means your product is never going to fail. Um, I'd also like to point out on here, for this uh, SN curve, you can actually see that in high cycle fatigue, you have quite a bit of scatter going on. So your results are always going to be statistical in nature, or probable failures. So what drives fatigue? Fatigue cracks grow to the stress range of the repeated load and not the maximum load. As I said before, in that example we saw, it's not the maximum load that caused that failure. It's actually the stress range that you see. And the stress range is the maximum stress minus the minimum stress. We also have another important aspect of my stress range. It's the mean stress. And the mean stress is the line around which the stress range occurs. If I have a positive mean stress, that positive mean stress will hold the crack open all the time, and there'll be damage done to it throughout the whole stress cycle. If I have a negative mean stress through part of the load cycle, the crack is actually being held closed by the uh, stress range, and that will minimize the fatigue crack growth. So how, what, we do, what do we do with SOLIDWORKS on predicting fatigue? So SOLIDWORKS deals with high cycle fatigue, and we predict uh, the fatigue failure in metals using the SN approach, using a stress strain curve, uh, stress to number of cycles to failure of our material. The calculation within SOLIDWORKS is a two-stage process. We have to do a strength test using a linear static study, okay, and then we define a fatigue study which will reference the stresses in the strength test and then tell the system how many cycles to failure we are seeing. So before we start, a question to you. Is this service life a design challenge for your team? So we're already seeing a majority of people saying, yes, it is indeed a, a design challenge for their team. Um, you know, it's part of their daily design process. That's not surprising. The majority of metal components fail not uh, because they're too weak, but in fact because uh, they fatigue over time. Uh, interesting enough, we've got over 80%. And um, that's the rule of thumb that most people talk about. 80% of metal failures is caused by fatigue. So enough of me talking about fatigue. Let's have a look and see how SOLIDWORKS can tackle this problem. So let's do a very simple analysis on a part. And I'm using a part purely for speed. Um, that we have a steering arm bracket um, from a car front, front suspension that we want to analyze. Um, we've got two goals that we need to meet. We want to make sure that the part is strong enough. We want a factor of safety of two. But we also want to make sure that the complaint will last long enough. So we want one million load cycles. And in this case, a load cycle is the car going from opposite lock to opposite lock. Okay, So all the way left, all the way right a million times, so basically going around one million corners throughout its service life. So here's our component within SOLIDWORKS. Okay, and the first thing we need to do in this two-stage process is to do the strength test. Okay, and we do that with a static study. So for those of you who haven't done uh, SOLIDWORKS simulation before, uh, what we can see here is a series of uh, uh, parts of the information that we need to, to give the system. It already knows what the components are made from. That's come from SOLIDWORKS. It's uh, a steel component. The next thing we need to do is tell the part how it's connected to the rest of the assembly. So we're going to take the mating face and hold that down. And also, where the bolts are, we are going to hold those down to. So a very simple uh, restraint set in this component. The next thing I want to do is apply a load. I want to apply the load to these two regions here. But I don't have a part going between those. So I'm going to use a very useful 
feature called a remote load, which allows me to tell the system attach these two components and apply my load of 5,000 newtons. Okay, and you can see it's actually going to provide that uh, force transfer for me. So, a few clicks, we've got this part. We are going to set up a fatigue analysis and apply an event. Now, event basically tells the system that this load is going to be applied. Then we're going to apply it one million times. If you had multiple tests, you could actually apply multiple loads at the same time. In this case, we're also fully reversing this load. So it's going maximum lock in one direction to maximum lock in the other direction. You could, if you wanted to, just go from wheels, you know, wheels forward to left to, to middle again. So you can choose whichever type of loading that you want. Next, we need to apply the material, because the component doesn't know the uh, SN curve for this material. Now, because it's a, uh, a steel, I can use the ASME code for that, and we can say that it's a carbon steel. Okay. And again, very quick setup. And uh, at this point, we're now ready to run. So it's going to recalculate my stress results based upon my new material definition and recalculate, I mean, sorry, calculate for the first time the fatigue life. So very quickly, we now can have a look at the life. So our goal is one million cycles, i.e. we want this up in this red region. What we can see is that around 250,000 cycles, we're going to have a problem. A crack is going to start to grow. Okay? And we want to be on the safe side, so any crack, we would say, is a bad crack. We don't have to worry about it going all the way through, this, all the, way through the web. We want to have no cracks at all. So we need to modify our design. Let's go back to SolidWorks and uh, give a little bit more meat to our web. And uh, there we go, made it thicken it up a bit. But the other thing is that the, uh, the stresses and the point of uh, the crack was on this sharp edge. So maybe if we reduce the stress concentration factor by taking away this sharp, we can also lower the local stresses. Now obviously because we made a, a change in our geometry, we need to uh, rerun our stress test. Again, a couple of seconds to solve this. And let's look at our factor of safety. It's gone up from uh, just over two to uh, over two and a half, so all well and good. If we go to the uh, fatigue, we can rerun that. And suddenly now, everything is over a million cycles. So a couple of minutes of work, we can validate our design to make sure that it meets not only the strength test, but also the fatigue environment that we need to, uh, to withstand. So when we're dealing with um, fatigue, 
we need to think about what type of loading we're going to be applying. So in this simple case, I applied a constant amplitude loading. Okay? I didn't have any more information other than the fact what the maximum load was going to be. I didn't know how rapidly the person was going to change from lock to lock. So we can apply that and get some useful information out of there. Okay? Um, when we're dealing with um, the actual design, the SN curve for the material is very important. If you have that, use it. If you don't have it, use approximate data. Uh, in terms of this design, we use an ASME approximation. Okay. We need to understand how multiple load cases can interact and set up a study to deal with this. Um, I don't have time to talk about that, but if you download the PDF that we will talk about at the end of the presentation, I'll go into that in that PDF. I suggest you do because it's uh, useful information. The mean stress. As I said before, the mean stress is very important. Okay? In this case, the mean stress was zero because it goes from full left to full right. Okay? But what happens if I was going from half right to half full right to center? the mean stress would be slightly different before. So you need to account for that within your testing. Before I go on to the next section, um, I'd like to know how accurately you know your product's service life load. In this example, we have done an approximation where we know the peak load, um, but do you have historical data? Uh, can you measure it from a physical prototype? Or do you use industry standard test case? Uh, information. Excellent, Stephen. We're seeing a, a big group of people saying that they approximate it, uh, and then a nearly even split of historical data and physical prototypes, uh, and then a smaller group that say industry standard test cases. And that's not uh, unsurprising. I mean, uh, most of us know what the uh, peak load is going to be, so we're probably going to estimate the, uh, the cycling of that load. Um, in this next example, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to mix and match both the approximation and an industry standard test case. Now, what we have here is we have a, a load history that we are going to apply. So let's take the example that this car is now going to be modified to be a race car. Okay? And we have this information about the load cycling of the, uh, the loading on this bracket during the period of a race, uh, whether it's one lap or one race or, or whatever. Let's say it's going to be one lap. It's going to see this kind of load. What we want to be able to do is we want to be able to match our existing load case of 5,000 newtons maximum load to this history-based approach. And this is what we're going to do next. Okay, and this is by we can do this by using a um, variable amplitude load. Okay, so we're going to suggest a fatigue load. In this case, we're going to take a, a variable amplitude load and apply that. So this time, rather than adding a um, number of cycles, we need to tell it how this changes over time. And this is done by a curve. If you want to, you can put them in uh, piece by piece. If you have historical data, you can import it. And in this case, I do have some uh, standard cases where the Society of American uh, Automotive Engineers has a bracket load case, which is very handy because I have a bracket. And I'm going to import that. Oops, what's going on here? Uh, user error. I do apologize for that. And essentially what that's doing is going to be a load multiplier. So it's going to multiply my 5,000 load by this value. Uh, unfortunately, it assumed I had a uh, unit load, but in fact I don't. So I just need to tie this down a little bit, otherwise it's too heavy. And if this is for per lap, I would have 72 laps in my race. And away we go. I can also start to look at some point uh, data and say, well, tell me some information about various locations. Okay, so give me some uh, fatigue data over time for these locations. By using the variable load history, we do something called rain flow counting. Now, I don't have time to go into what rain flow counting is. If you download the PDF, I'll explain it. So 
this time when we look at our life, what's this telling us? This is telling us that we want to, how many times can this bracket withstand my load case over 72 laps? So this is telling me that this bracket would have a fatigue crack growing in this region after three, uh, after about two and a half uh, races. So you need to change your bracket every two races to ensure that during the third race the wheel doesn't fall off. Uh, and this is where fatigue can really help you um, satisfy your customers' expectations. There might be a situation where you want a product to last, you know, a thousand days or twenty thousand days or how many days you want, but you physically can't do it. To do that would make the product too heavy, too expensive. But it's cheaper to make it light and then replace it after a certain amount of time. So fatigue can actually help you set your maintenance schedule. So there's the two examples of the ways that you can use uh, SOLIDWORKS to maximize your components' lives uh, using fatigue analysis. So when we talk about the service life, you know, you try and obtain as accurate a service load history as you can for your design. Um, what we want to do is we want to remove the notches, the stress concentrators in our design, because if there's a smooth surface, there's no place for the cracks to initiate and grow. There are different factors that can improve the resistance to fatigue, uh, shot peening, coating, cladding and painting, and maybe chemical inhibitors can all help inhibit the uh, growth of fatigue cracks. In terms of fatigue cracks, you know, the fatigue cracks start at locations of high stress and they're always on the surface, or almost always on the surface. So we take away sharp corners, notches. Okay. If we can change the mean stress of our loading locally, then that's very good. I mean, by locally, I mean we actually maybe put the surface of the component into compression. And this can be done through a manufacturing process by using shrink fits, by using shot peening or auto fretage to induce a negative mean stress in the components. That concludes the presentation for the most part. Um, so just for me to uh, have some understanding, what's your level of interest in solar simulation? Uh, are you just general interest? You're just browsing? Are you beginning an investigation into solar simulation? Are you evaluating product? Or are you ready to purchase? Stephen, we'll give people a couple more seconds to type finish responding. Okay. And uh, lastly, um, do you need any more information from us on this subject, um, ranging from a, a quote from a SolarWorks reseller? Do you need a, a, a demo on, on SolarWorks simulation to help you understand the capabilities further? Um, do you need a salesperson to call you for follow-up, or nothing at this time? Okay. Okay, so in summary, uh, predicting fatigue really enables you to reduce uh, field service failures and the warranty costs that are incurred in that. Um, it helps you stop over or undesigning parts and it helps you investigate the effects of material selection on product life. Changing from a steel to fatigue, is, uh, sorry, changing from a steel to an aluminium isn't just about strength, it's also about its fatigue behavior. You must take that into account. But generally, in the absence of information, use conservative assumptions in all your analyses work. And as I said before, the SN curve is generally statistic in nature. So You've got to think about the fatigue as a probability of failure, and manufacturing design uh, factors can reduce the material's uh, strength. So use that to both uh, enhance your design where you can. I spoke about the uh, presentation download, and you can actually uh, download it at this address. It's actually more than that's in this presentation. 
Uh, there's a couple of other example work, work through and some more examples and explanations that I didn't have time to go through today. Um, and with that, I shall uh, hand it over to Amy. Do you have any questions for me? Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, this does conclude the demonstration portion of our presentation. Uh, but please stay online if you can, as we will be asking Stephen a few questions. So please go ahead and enter them into your text.